before anybody asks, the shirt is from Mustard Yard Press, at Mustard Yard Press. I get asked about it every time I wear this shirt, um, and I obviously had to wear this shirt for the video. It's from Mustard Yard Press. It's a small business on Etsy. They do a bunch of, like, fandom, band, TV show stuff. I like them a lot, uh, so go check them out. Not sponsored, obviously. Hello, welcome back to my channel. So, some newer subscribers might not know this because like for the past month, all of my content has been LGBT oriented for Pride Month, but I am typically a media reviewer, specifically movies and comics slash comic related media. And something a lot of people who aren't into comics might not know is that the comic community is basically consistently a shit show. Like we are seriously always arguing and there's always something going on. And something I'm thinking of doing once a week or so is posting one video in between my normal long form content and do a shorter commentary about something that's going on in the comic community since I'm still trying to indoctrinate you all into the comic community. And not all topics in this segment are going to be bad, I swear, but we're uh, definitely not starting with a good one. So today we're going to be talking about the recent scandal surrounding Spider-Man Lotus. What is it? Why is it? Can we please all just get along for one day? What is Spider-Man Lotus? Was that last question just added because I couldn't think of a better segue? Yes, Spider-Man Lotus is a fan-made film that's going to follow Peter Parker's struggle to continue on as both Peter and Spider-Man following the death of Gwen Stacy, who in that universe he was dating instead of MJ. It's less happy-go-lucky and more return hope to the hero, and it was set to come out this summer. I absolutely do not think that's happening, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> the teaser and official trailer for Lotus came out 11 and 7 months ago respectively, with the official trailer gaining over 1.6 million views. There was a lot of excitement around the movie. Sure, there were people that didn't like it or felt that it was pretentious, but for the most part, a lot of people were really excited about Lotus. There was a smaller scandal. I don't even know if I could call it that. There was a smaller issue a while ago regarding the payment of storyboard artists for Lotus, but other than that, there was not a lot of loud negative noise surrounding the movie until a few nights ago when, oh my god, so much happened. Let's start with some background and some big names. Warden Wayne and Gavin Kona. I think that's how you start his name. Warden Wayne is a 22-year-old actor from Arkansas, and he plays Peter Parker in Spider-Man Lotus. And Gavin Konop is an 18-year-old writer and director, and I couldn't find where he's from, but I did find that he's apparently 6 foot 10. Holy shit. I don't have an exact timeline for when the Lotus Project came to be, but the teaser trailer came out 11 months ago at the time of writing this, and they would have had to have done at least some, you know, casting, writing, and filming. So I'm gonna guesstimate that this project began anywhere between two to four years ago, leaning more on that four year side, uh, because four months before the teaser trailer came out, they dropped an Indiegogo, which is like, if you don't know what that is, it's basically like GoFundMe, it's just a crowdfunding site for the movie, and they gained over $100,000 through that campaign. I'm sure those people are regretting that decision currently, but I don't know, maybe don't give six figures to teenagers. <laughs> so after the teaser and official trailer dropped on Gavin's YouTube channel, which is GJ Konop, he also posted some of the music for the movie, a little like thank you video and a Q&A live stream, that last one coming out just a few days before all this happened. If only they knew what storm was coming. <laughs> so it all started a few days ago when screenshots and allegations of racism, ableism, and homophobia came out against both Warden and Gavin, and it just kind of set everything off. I will say it is pretty interesting just how quickly it escalated in a not very long period of time. Like this all started and escalated within like 48 hours. It started with the screenshots of Warden saying the N slur in an Instagram group chat, and then there were the screenshots of Gavin saying the same slur along with the R slur, and then more screenshots came out, and then the cast and crew started to either confirm or deny, which led to screen recordings coming out, which led to both Warden and Gavin posting public apologies, but that didn't really solve anything. And then the Green Goblin actor got exposed for saying the N slur, and then former crew members started to make burner accounts to leak parts of the project, and now everyone is yelling at everything all at once. Let's backtrack a little bit, okay? Firstly, the allegations against Warden Wayne, since that's what started all of this. Several screenshots started to come out of messages from Warden Wayne on Instagram where he says the Ensler, as well as making a remark about Mexicans and 
assumably Middle Easterns. I could be wrong about that considering there isn't like any context provided, but he says someone looks like they bomb shit for fun and that's like a stereotype against Middle Easterns that they're terrorists. So again, I could totally be wrong about that and I'm sorry if I am, but that's my assumption based on his language in the other screenshots. So, you know, that's obviously not good. You know, we have this white guy saying a racial slur when he's starring in a movie that's coming out soon that could, you know, boost his notoriety and reputation. I wonder if the director is aware of this or if he's unaware about the opportunity that he's given to a person like this and if he's going to be upset finding out about it. Oh, he's got screenshots against him too? And he, and he knew about Warden before they... Oh. Okay. Yeah, shortly after the warden screenshots started coming out, Gavin screenshots were soon to follow, which not only contained the N and R slur, but the F slur as well. This is where it does get a little bit muddy though, and I think that this is partially why the bubble of conversation expanded so much so quickly, because some of the screenshots of Gavin's texts are allegedly fake. This claim is coming from Tuin, who plays Gwen Stacy in Spider-Man Lotus, and I do feel bad because she didn't do anything wrong, and she's just like getting backlash due to association, but she's also not helping. She quote retweeted a group of messages from Gavin saying that they aren't real, as in just like that bundle of messages in the tweet that she like quote retweeted. But she said that some messages that are floating around are real, but she doesn't say which ones are the real ones. And then in another tweet, she implies that Gavin's texts on his phone have auto caps turned on, you know, like at the start of a message or start of a sentence, the auto caps, you know, I don't know why I explained that, sorry. Um, either way, she doesn't really give evidence for that claim, and then she posted a screenshot of a Word document that condemns Warden, but also doesn't mention Gavin, and kind of apologizes on Warden's behalf a little. Don't get me wrong, I do not think that she should be held accountable for something that she literally had no part in, and it sucks that she is being dragged into it. But on the other hand, I feel like if she is commenting on it, the comments should provide more clarity than confusion, which is unintentionally what happened. I don't think that she did that on purpose at all, just so we're clear. But that confusion, even though it was intentional, was made because now, you know, people are trying to excuse everything away by saying that everything was photoshopped. And then there's arguments about what's real and what isn't. And again, that's not Two Win's fault. That's the fault of people making the fake screenshots, just so we're clear. Don't fucking do that. Because both Gavin and Warden came out with their own statements confirming that they said that stuff. So if it's already been confirmed that they did say things in real screenshots, there's no purpose to make fake ones. It's lame and unnecessary. And the people making them clearly didn't care about like what was being said in those messages. They just kind of wanted to stir the pot. Uh, don't fucking do that. And the final thing I'll say about Tuin is that she did end up confirming some screenshots against Gavin, so there's that, you know. I understand you can see my mic slowly coming into frame because this holder keeps falling. If it's not obvious enough, my new house setup is not done. I understand people being kind of up in arms or cautious of everyone involved in the project because of, especially at this point, like how much has come out, but people like Tuin have made it clear that they weren't aware of the behavior and don't condone it at all. So leave her and, you know, people like the actress that played MJ, Mariah, and the little kid, you know, people that truly did not do anything, please leave them alone. But also, guys that I just mentioned, if you're watching this, please don't have screenshots come out against you after I just said that. Anyways, on to Warden and Gavin's statements. First came Warden Wayne's, honestly, pretty immediately after the screenshots started coming out. Like, within a few hours, he had the apology post. Posted. Hello everyone, I've decided to come out in regards to certain things from my past. I've always thought it was better to be above reproach and come forward honestly about mistakes I made when I was younger. This is very hard to say and I feel gross, but I'm coming clean. Years ago, when I was in high school, I used to say terrible things. I used offensive language, often homophobic or racially insensitive, casually or in jokes. I am sorry and I'm ashamed. I was raised in a homeschool conservative environment in a small town in Arkansas, where I had to sneak around on other iPads and computers to use social media. My family has always been associated with people such as the Dugars. I think that's how you say it. It could be Duggars, but I think it's Dugars. 
and those values were subsequently pushed onto me. I didn't get my own cell phone until I was 18. I was in a bubble where I wasn't aware of how serious it was for me to say these things or words. My ideas of right and wrong were skewed. My friend group at the time encouraged and perpetuated these habits. All of it quickly became part of my vocabulary because of the lifestyles around me, and I didn't want to be excluded, and I'm embarrassed to say so. I had convinced myself it wasn't wrong for me to say because of the justification I was constantly persuaded to believe, and I was never held accountable for it. The groups I associated with online were not good people, but I wanted to fit in and have friends, so I aligned myself and tried to act in ways they'd approve of, which included saying offensive things for the sake of a reaction or making ignorant jokes. I was an immature kid with too much time and no sense of integrity. I was stupid. There was even a time when I made an account solely dedicated to hating on Eunice, who is now one of my best friends. He knows about that account now and the things I used to say about him, but he forgave me because of how much I've worked to change my habits over the past four plus years. I'm embarrassed and sad at who I was, and I'm sorry to anyone I may have hurt years ago or anyone I may have hurt now by revealing this information. When I was finally able to leave the bubble I was in and find people with more stable sense of morality, I was able to be told that the things I said were wrong, and I learned I pushed to change. But regardless of this, I should have known better, and I spend every day wishing I hadn't been a terrible person when I was younger, but I can't change the past. All I can do is take responsibility and own up to my incredible shortcomings and continue trying to be a better person. I hope you can all forgive me. I'm sorry. So let's talk about that. I can see multiple sides to this whole thing. On one hand, obviously people can grow and change and people are for the most part products of their environment and he owned up to his mistakes. But on the other hand, for a lot of people, it's still kind of too little too late, which I know isn't fair to say, but if someone was hurt by the things he said and his apology doesn't change that hurt, then you can't really do anything about it. A lot of the conversation around both Warden and Gavin's statements are along the lines of like, he apologized. And if you look at the accounts of the people saying things like that, you'll find that these comments are coming from people who are not in the demographics that Warden said things about. It's really easy to say, come on, he apologized. Why are you being so difficult? Why can't you let it go when you are in zero way affected by the conflict? Even looking at it through my own eyes, I cannot relate to the hurt a black person feels at, you know, experiencing racism. I can sympathize with them and denounce the racism, but I can't look at those words and feel their effect in the same way a black person could. And I think a big issue with the people who are giving people shit for not accepting Warden's apology is the lack of empathy, which is weird because this is an issue of emotion and morality. For me personally, I don't accept Warden's apology because I can't. I was not really affected by it. And I don't blame anyone for not accepting it either. And if you were affected by it, but you do accept the apology, then that's great. As I said, I do believe in people growing and changing. A lot of people believe in that. And I think a lot of people want to believe that Warden has changed based on his current behaviors in comparison to those old screenshots. The unfortunate thing is just that we'll never really know because none of us know Warden. Yeah, it's great that people like Tuin and Mariah say that they never saw any of this behavior from Warden or Gavin when they were working on the film, but the language Gavin and Warden used was in private messages and group chats. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you can never know until you're in one of those chats. You just kind of have to go with your intuition about whether or not Warden and Gavin deserve forgiveness or if they were even being genuine. Speaking of Gavin, let's now talk about his statement. He first posted one a few hours after Warden posted his screenshot. And this first one is just about Warden since at this point, the Gavin screenshots hadn't come out yet. I'll be honest, his statement does feel less sincere than Warden's. It feels more like damage control rather than accountability. I'll put it on the screen for you to read, of course, but it's a lot of like, yeah, I knew about this before, but it's still not okay, guys. Don't get me wrong, but also please still watch my movie. There's no racism in my movie. My movie doesn't perpetuate any of that stuff. Please watch my movie. If it sounds like I'm more critical of Gavin than Warden, I'll admit I am because of everything that's come out since this statement. And I actually do understand the point he's trying to make about how so many other people who have done nothing wrong worked really hard on Spider-Man Lotus and it's not fair to them because that part is true. But he's trying to loop himself in with those people and have Warden be the fall man for everything when Gavin at this point, uh, I think is worse. And knowing everything that's come out now against Gavin, that claim in his first statement about holding Warden accountable feels like horse shit. These people have put themselves on the line to achieve the vision that I have set forth and they don't deserve to have their work diminished because of one person's actions. 
Honey, you've got a big storm coming. So shortly after he posted that statement is when the screenshots started to come out against Gavin saying the F slur, R slur, N slur, as well as making racist comments against Asians and also just honestly being a fucking dick. As I previously mentioned, some screenshots coming out were actually fake, but there were also very much real ones. And those real screenshots and screen recordings confirm that Gavin has said the R slur, the N slur, saying he won't watch Aquaman because it was made by a dog eater. You're nothing more than a joke, you worthless sack of shit. No one takes you seriously. No one will ever take you seriously, bitch. You are going to die a lonely, miserable death. Jesus Christ, Gavin. And since that's come out, some other people have also come out with their experiences with Gavin. Some people just being like other comic Twitter members who were harassed due to Gavin, and others being crew members from Spider-Man Lotus talking about some issues with the work environment, such as overworking or miscredited work, and other smaller issues that built up and led to a lot of people quitting on the project. So I think over a day after the screenshots started surfacing, Gavin posted his final statement to Twitter. The past few days have been unlike anything I've ever felt or seen before. It's the most unprecedented series of events I have ever encountered. Nothing could have prepared me for it, but we're here now. I've spent all day trying to distinguish the reality from fabrication, but I think I'd ultimately just be wasting your time. I'm going to be transparent with you all, and that's all I can do. I do not condone any of the fake screenshots circulating around. I am and always will be one to take accountability for myself and accept where I am wrong. However, many of these are not reflective of the way I currently speak or express myself, and everyone close to me can account to that. All the real messages are from when I was either 14 or 15 years old, and if they're screen recorded, they're legit. I learned a long time ago about the severity of this all, and I have worked tirelessly to escape those habits. Minor note, uh, hey man, it's maybe not a good idea to say I will always take accountability for myself However, just a bad idea and an apology, but anyways. While I can't attest to all of them, I can say that some pretty disgusting screen recordings and screenshots out there are real. In my early years of middle and high school, the R word along with other unacceptable terms such as the F word were part of my vocabulary and I'd use them fairly frequently. I'm not proud of it, and I wish I had been more mature to know better than to use them, along with several other immature and nonsensical statements. Aside from anything on my personal account, I cannot identify which of these are me and which are not, because the Instagram account, formerly known as Spidey.Central, was not originally solely owned by me. The account was given to me in April 2018 before it had picked up any traction, and some admins from my previous Flash account were given access. Some spoke in chats with that account, and it wasn't until I got older when I realized the severity of who I was associating myself with. I no longer speak to these people, and I don't know where to contact most of them. All I can do is hold my younger self accountable for the messages that were me, just as much as I have held accountability for Warden, for not being cognizant enough to realize the immaturity of what I was sending. I apologize to the communities that these may impact, and I spent most days wishing I could redo those years of my life. I'm sure many more messages will surface throughout the day and coming weeks, and if you truly do believe that I have matured, then that's all I can ask for. I do not plan on being active on social media much at all anymore. The film will be released because I owe it to those who were promised it for years now. Thank you, and I am sorry that these messages and comments were once sent by me." So yeah, in the second half of his statement, he brings up the fact that for some things he doesn't know if it was actually him saying it, because the account used to be a Spider-Man fan account called Spidey.Central, which he isn't the original owner of, according to him. However, that part is being called into question, both by people who remember that account back in the day and how there weren't any other admins on it, and the fact that a source leaking the screenshots says that there were no admins and that Gavin is the one that made the account. That part is the he said, she said, and it honestly doesn't matter considering, again, Gavin did say stuff. But I do think it's noteworthy that he claims he'll always take accountability, but at multiple points in his statement, he kind of tries to deflect from his actions. So yeah, those were Gavin's statements, and my comments about Warden's apology also apply here. You know, the whole thing about accepting it or not accepting it and perceiving what's genuine. So I'm not going to rehash that because it applies, you know? But I will say something that I didn't mention when talking about Warden's apology which is the whole thing about age. Both Warden and Gavin bring up the fact that they were teenagers when they said all that stuff, and a lot of people are using that as like, oh, what, you're mad at what they said as teenagers? Everyone said dumb things as teenagers. They were just kids. Let it go. But I think, honestly, the thing about them being teenagers only goes so far. For one, not every teenager goes through like a 
casual racism phase, so let's not act like that's normal. But for two, even if a teenager was hanging out with the wrong people and saying shit they shouldn't say, there's still nothing wrong with telling that teenager that what they said wasn't okay. Like that's, you know, kind of how people learn. But also, I think we should focus less on the fact that they were teenagers when the messages were sent and more on how many years ago they were sent. Because there are screenshots that contain reactions, which is an Instagram feature that's like not even two years old. So... So you might be thinking at this point, you know, we're probably wrapping up now, right? Since I've talked about the controversies and the responses from the controversial people right? Nope. <laughs> Basically, right after Gavin posted his final note, the fucking Green Goblin actor in Spider-Man Lotus was exposed for saying the end slur. Oh my god. And this wasn't an old screenshot. This is from the day that everything was happening. This guy is named John Salandria, and if you're wondering what his response is to people being upset at him for saying a slur, nope, he didn't apologize. Instead, he went on a weird rant on Instagram about how context matters, and it's just a word, and you can't give words power, because they can't physically hurt you, and all people care about is drama instead of real issues. Oh boy, a lot to unpack there. If more people liked what they saw in the mirror, they wouldn't get all their anger out on the internet. What? I don't even think I can put into words like how avoidant that argument is. If you loved yourself, you wouldn't get mad at me for saying a slur used against minorities. I have no issue with my behavior, so if you have an issue with it, there's something wrong with you. Dude. <laughs> also, the whole thing of like, you shouldn't give power to words only goes so far. Like the whole sticks and stones may break bones, but words can never hurt me, yada, yada, yada. It's like, that's true in the technical sense, but it shouldn't be a rule to live by, nor an excuse to say terrible shit. You can remove the power of being told, you know, you're dumb and ugly and I hate you. But that doesn't mean that saying you're dumb and ugly and I hate you isn't fucking rude. <laughs> to say that you shouldn't give the words I'm telling you the power to hurt you intentionally removes the responsibility from the person saying the bad shit and puts it onto the person being told the bad shit instead of just acting like a normal person and not saying bad shit. Also, I feel like I shouldn't need to say this, but a non-black person should not be saying that a word is just a word in reference to a word that was made by non-black people to dehumanize and degrade black people. Like, yeah, obviously it's easy for you to say, hey, that word that's been used for centuries to refer to you as literally subhuman garbage. Have you tried actually not being offended by that? Honestly, fuck John Salandria. My openness to nuance can only expand so far. Yeah, you know, maybe Warden has changed and he is regretful and he truly is sorry. But there's no excuse or what if for John to be doing this. That's just intentional ignorance and fuck that. So what happened after the John stuff, you might be wondering. Don't worry. <laughs> there's more, because of course there is. Thankfully, there haven't really been any more screenshots exposed at the time of me writing this, and actually at the time of me filming this, which is good, uh, but some disgruntled crew members from Spider-Man Lotus have started to leak parts of the movie. A fight scene between Spider-Man and Green Goblin, never before seen pictures, the entire script the first six minutes of the movie. It was like every time you open Twitter, there was a new thing happening. I will say some leaks were not real as confirmed by cast members like Tuin, but those pictures and videos absolutely are real. So there's some people on the crew now saying, fuck Gavin. So here we are, controversy, scandal, expose. What started as a few screenshots avalanched into the destruction of reputations and an unwashable stain on a movie. How did we get here? I don't mean, you know, the consequences of the crew's actions. I mean, more than that. Like, how and why did these screenshots come out? Well, let's talk about the catalyst of the downfall of Spider-Man Lotus. Some kid named Matt. My name is Matt. I am 15. I met Gavin Konoff early 2017. I was only 9, about to turn 10. I looked up to him more than anyone else, because I finally found someone who loved comics like me. He was even going to help me make my own Spider-Man film. He was going to write and edit the whole project. He eventually started to get more followers and changed his platform to JGK Central and started to drop me. I had other friends, but no one who I felt understood me like Gavin. I wanted to be just like him. Having him drop me made me extremely upset. I found these messages from the last couple of years and got upset. I was too young to realize how problematic and toxic he was. I've said stupid things in the past. I won't deny it. But like I said, I was very young and very influenced by those I looked up to. I was heavily influenced by him and thought what he did was edgy and cool. 
I've grown in the last couple years having to watch him become very well known. I wanted to come out and expose him a while ago for different reasons than I am now. I wanted to let everyone know that he doesn't care about those who have been with him since the beginning. I was too scared to come forward because of how strong the Lotus fan base was. I was too afraid to be attacked by everyone for exposing Gavin for something that may be considered silly or petty. Every time his accounts would say something like that, it wasn't some admin, it was him. I'm disappointed in him for not taking full accountability and putting the blame on others. Oh. My. God. This project that took years and six figures to make crashed and burned spectacularly all because of a nine-year-old's revenge. I genuinely don't think any controversy I've ever talked about has had that wild of a story behind it. Like, that is a villain origin story. Now, I will be fair and acknowledge some of the criticisms people have had of Matt for having this information and only using it when it was seemingly beneficial or for revenge rather than actually caring about what Gavin has said. And I do see that side of it. I definitely think that Matt had some personal stakes in Gavin's fall from grace. I can also see his side of it where he talks about being afraid to come out because of Gavin's fan base and the reach he had in the comic community. Gavin has over 50,000 followers on Twitter and over 80,000 on Instagram, and Lotus was way bigger than that. Andrew Garfield was aware of and commented on Lotus. And we already saw one instance where Gavin used his platform in a way that led to someone being harassed to the point of law enforcement being involved. So I don't think it's that unreasonable for him to be a little worried. And also people are now finding messages from Matt saying things like Gavin had said, such as the Ensler, and I don't at all want to sound like I'm excusing that because I'm not. I think it should still be taken into account that Matt was nine years old. And there is a difference between a nine-year-old saying what his older, more popular friends were trying to say to get them to think that he was cool versus the older friends in that situation being in their mid to late teens saying that stuff just because. <sighs> so, yeah. That's Spider-Man Lotus. Nothing else has really come out since then. There were some fake screenshots against Mariah, um, which were very obviously fake. Um, so there's really not much else to say on that, but yeah, it's gone kind of quiet. Um, that was the downfall of Spider-Man Lotus. I'm very interested in seeing the reaction when the film comes out. I honestly do feel like once it does come out, a lot of people are going to ignore or just forget about everything that happened. Um, and I really don't think this is going to have a long-term effect on Gavin, honestly, or Warden, or Green Goblin. Um, and I don't know. Are you guys going to watch it still, knowing everything? I kind of want to just because of, like, the people that did nothing wrong, that worked really hard on it, because I know that they were overworked and underpaid. Um, and they were really passionate about Spider-Man and about the project, and... It would really suck if that went to waste, but I also don't really want to put my support behind someone like Gavin, so I don't know. I really don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below, but yeah. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, like the video. If you liked the video, comment on the video, and if you liked the video, subscribe to the video maker, and I will see you in the next video where hopefully my mic will not be falling down. <laughs> okay, bye. It was me, Barry.